Yo, what the fuck is up, man? Dope Talk TV. I got my motherfucking dog in the house, Cedric Lucent, aka Mr. Show Up and Show Out. How the fuck are you doing, bro? What's goody? I'm doing Nigga, great, man. It. It's a pleasure. Why? Appreciate you having me on here, though. Yeah, bro. Appreciate you, man. Like 386, you know, we're from the same county, same place. Yes, I mean, sir. damn, bro. Like, what's up with you, bro? Hey, man, just chasing the dream, bro. Straight out to 386, bro. A lot of people think they got to fucking leave to go and chase their dreams somewhere. A lot of people talk crap about the area, but really it's, it's who you are and who you surround yourself with. You know, you can obtain those big goals straight out of Volusia County here in 386. You're a homeland. You don't have to move away. You know, for some people, they got to do that, but that's for them. You know, if they feel like they need that, they need that. But me, I'm right here, rooted here with my people that I've been with in the trenches. You can hear that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out you, bro. That's what's up, man. I mean, how, how does it feel being a pro? Bro, honestly, it's, it's, it's surreal because just two and a half years ago, I wasn't fighting at all. I was still sitting. I was on like a five-year layover from fighting. And I was thinking to myself, I'm training with some of these training with some some guys, you know, in jujitsu. I started doing jujitsu, dabbling again when I got back into mixed martial arts. And I just got inspired by the people that I was around and I saw them chasing their dreams and whatnot. And it really inspired me and it just made me think like, listen, this is this one life, you know, time to go and get it. You can't sit here and wait another couple of years and want to try to get it then. So uh, I, I got up off of the couch and freaking started actually putting some effort towards this and just trying to give it my all. And I, to be here, to be 1-0 and as a pro after starting my amateur career 0-2, then going on a four-fight win streak when coming back, and then winning my first pro fight in the fashion that I did, it's just, again, it just feels surreal. And, again, it's a testament to the people that I have around me, the people that I put their blood, sweat, and tears into this. Um, I'm just thankful. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's that's insane, brother. That was beautiful. And I know that you be training a lot, like a lot. And there's so many different types of styles of fighting. What is like, what are the type of style that like you use basically? So throughout the week, we're training boxing. I'm training boxing, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, um, and MMA. Good old MMA and wrestling, of course. Wrestling is my background. I grew up wrestling here in Volusia County. Um, wrestled for Deltona High School. Um, and been wrestling, you know, on and off since high school. Little tournaments here and there. Um, that's primarily my base. Um, but kickboxing and jujitsu, that's that's honestly my newfound love now is just being able to play with the human body like no that's crazy man that's i mean how does it feel even having these pro fighters come into your fights i mean i'm i'm talking about big time players like big time people bro like that's that's a big deal how does that make you feel honestly man it, 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 it again it's surreal because these are people that i've seen in the game and i've seen them follow the formula and they've reached that level of success you know they've gotten to that opportunity on that get to that major stage and it's it's time for me to replicate that's how that's exactly how i feel it's time for me to go every day when i wake up i'm thinking it's time to fucking get it nigga we made it facts bro and brother i mean like you understand that your 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 hands they're weapons bro like legally, bro. Like you could, I mean, you could fucking kill somebody with your hands, bro. So I want to know, like, how would you react if someone came up to you in the street? Like, <laughs> like for real, for real, bro. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like what happens if you do get into an altercation outside of the ring? So first off, I'm, I'm not fighting nobody outside the ring if I don't have to. Like but, I'm, I'm only fighting if I'm getting paid for it. That's what I do. That's, like, that's my job. Yep. But uh, don't get it twisted. If I have to defend myself or others around me, then have to and then it's it's gonna be a problem for whoever is there but ultimately you know the, the goal is to try to de-escalate the situation you know that's Why? the last resort last resort and what would happen is that person is gonna get dealt with they're they're 
may or may not be some legal repercussions that might have to be dealt with after the fact, but that'll be subjective to the situation at hand. Okay. That sounds that sounds one hundred. That's real, bro. <laughs> now, I mean, like, where do you, where do you see yourself in like five years, bro? Yo, honestly, five years, I I, I I see myself as the world champion. I really do, and I really do believe that that I can go toe to toe with the best guys and prove that I am the best. I believe that shit, bro. I've seen I've seen some clips, man. It's, it's amazing. Like, how many hours do you train a day? So currently, right now, um, my training schedule is all over the place because I got. Training, MMA is one of my full-time jobs, but my main full-time job is I'm a cybersecurity guy. So that takes up majority of my time. So I train around that. Um, so in the morning, every morning, I'm doing at least two hours of strength and conditioning. If not, I do it in the afternoon. Plus training in the afternoon is at least two to three hour sessions. So that's just five hours of like active training. Plus you have, you know, recovery, stretching and stuff throughout the day. So it's like, honestly, it's like six and a half to seven hours really a day that is going towards, you know, my, this mixed martial art dream that I have. Um, and again, sometimes it may not be actively training. It's uh, recovery, just weightlifting, um, doing resistance workouts and whatnot. Okay. Um, but on a my hardest day is three three sessions a day. That'll be what two plus two and a half plus another three. Uh, I got seven plus another two and a half of getting worked on by my dog Bobby. Bob, shout out to Bobby Impact. Okay. <laughs> Shout out, shout out. Um, so that's like an eight hour day, bro, for real. So it is it is a full time job. <laughs> nah, for real, for real, bro. Uh, like is. you really gotta commit to it, bro. Yeah. And like, have you ever like walked into a ring and you ever thought, like, man, like this guy might have a chance. This guy might whoop my ass. Like be like being real. I always I always think that. Okay. I, I don't ever put down my opponent. I always know that they if they sign that contract, if they agreed about me, that they believe, they truly believe that they going to take me out and I feed off of that because I know that I'm the best and I'm going to be the better man and my hard work is going to show up and show out that night. Um, so I never, I, I don't ever doubt an opponent. Don't matter if they look like the Pillsbury Doughboy, you know, you never know. Yeah. That's, that's, an, I mean, that's crazy, man. I mean, I see you doing a lot of different things, bro. Um, I, I, I see that you're like a man of all different traits. Like I see you doing the luxury car rentals, um, I was just scrolling down your page, man. I saw, you know, you were inspecting homes. You know, you do the cybersecurity that you were talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a lot. I got a couple of different things going on. So the people, people, some people would consider me a serial entrepreneur. So shout out to Show Up Show Out Rentals. That is my my luxury rental company here in Deltona, Florida. Um, the videos that you did see of me inspecting a house that was actually a, a, a fix and flip that's actually up for sale right now in Tallahassee um, that we purchased not too long ago. So I just did shot a little video to show people like, hey, look, you can, this is a house that I, I came and inspected and looked at. Then I bought it and fixed it up, fully gutted it, flipped it. Now, now it's on the market for sale, fresh and renovated to go. That's that's insane. How how important is uh, generational wealth for you? Honestly, it's it's very important because I'm a first first generation uh, born in America for my family. You know, I come from a, a Haitian and Cuban background, um, and it's it's very important because I I got family who literally they have nothing and, and it's nothing but themselves, and that's that's not bad bad to say, but you know I've seen them struggle. We've all come together to help each other out, but. It's, I don't want my my next generations to ever feel the same struggles that I felt and that my parents felt. You know, I feel like it's our responsibility to take advantage of the opportunities that we have in this day and age in America that there's no fucking excuse why anybody is fucking broke because there are opportunities left and right everywhere. It's just you got to put your pride to the side sometimes. Oof. That's true, bro. I mean, and that, that's deep what you said, man. Nothing but yourself. That's deep, bro. I haven't, I haven't heard that before. For real, bro. That's crazy, man. So your family's from Haiti. Uh, when did you move to Florida? 
So uh, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Shout out New York, Flatbush. Okay. Uh, okay. Lived all over Long Island. Moved to Florida in 2004. Um, I've been here ever since. My move. You know what's crazy? We moved here from fucking New York. I was already pissed. That we moved here from New York in, yeah. two, in 2004. And then my mom was working back and forth because it was still my, my money um, in New York. She was She's a nurse. So was, they get paid way more than being out here. So she brought us. She moved us down here. We're getting ready for the school year. We're here. It's just me and my brothers, um, my oldest brothers. Um, we, we're chilling. It's like it felt good the first first week. It was hot as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> getting used to the humidity. Yeah, bro. It's it like, different, right? You're just sweating nonstop, right? Thanks. But then- Something called a hurricane was announced, and we got hit with a hurricane. It was crazy, crazy shit. First hurricane came through, tree fell down, almost impaled me as a kid. It was crazy. What? The tree branch, freaking, I was sleeping in the twin bed. Yeah, oh, bro. Oh, my gosh. It was crazy, bro. Like, I woke, I literally woke up when it happened, and freaking, I hit my head on the goddamn tree, almost impaled myself. Luckily, it was so shallow, it, the, the branch came up, it didn't stab through me. Like, I woke up, and then I hit the branch. Like, like what the fuck? And bro, like, got water, water coming in. And as a kid, yeah. as a kid, I really didn't realize- what just happened? I was just like, oh shit, tree. Facts. I didn't even really think about it. I'm just like, oh shit, like we really almost died. Like, and then another week later, another hurricane freaking came. And then a couple weeks later, again, another hurricane. We got hit by three hurricanes back to back, but we was out of power for like two and a half months. It was hot as balls. It was one of the most traumatizing points in my life. And I thought to myself, I said, damn, Brother, I'm yeah. going through this. I said, damn, I'm imagining like I'm my my cousins and shit feel that still back in Haiti, dog. Like, they don't yeah, that's this, like, it's, it's yeah. like for real. We was living you, that type of life, and it was like, fuck, bro. You start to realize because I was born in Puerto Rico, so like it's crazy, man. So, like, going back to PR and seeing how like things are different, man, you know what I mean? Like, the infrastructure is completely different, over the lifestyle, here. you know, everything's different. So, like, when you come back home after you know that five day or week vacation, you're like, man, I'm blessed, man. You know what I'm saying? I see fact. why my parents wanted to come here. Better opportunity. That's you know fact. what I'm saying? Like safety. Like, you know, come on, be real, bro. I always like, thank my mom. Like, I took a trip out to yeah. St. Lucia not too long ago. And when I came back, even when I took my trip out to Jamaica, my first two trips out the country, I came back. I just sat there and just, you know, I cried sometimes. And it was like, I just thank my mom for all the sacrifices and everything she did to get us to get me to get where I am because I know ultimately that she is one of the major plain points of where I am in my life and shout out to that woman man. yeah yeah shout out man shout out for real because I, I love my mom man I know how I feel I'm a mama's boy man you <laughs> know what I'm saying like I, you know I'm a mama's boy I just left my mom's house we just picked up she got chickens and shit man yeah. believe it or not man and what my, do you think that's what my mom's trying to get to she's trying to yeah. get some land I'm trying to get her some land yeah you know? facts bro you know what I'm saying? Because these egg prices are out the roof right now, bro. I'm hearing. That's yeah. the new trade. Yeah, what? bro. So I got some fresh eggs and shit straight out the hen's ass. You know uh, what I'm saying? But, what? Nah, bro. <laughs> that shit was still warm and everything, bro. <laughs> nah, bro. But man, like that's crazy, brother. So um, what do you like to do like on your free time? Like besides, you know... Like how do you? Free time. Yeah, yeah, no, man. Like, man I, know you, I know you're working hard, time. man. I know you're working hard, but... Like uh, if honestly, you did have the choice to have it, you know, I'm a family man. I'm not, that's the whole reason why I, I work the way I work so hard. The way I do is so one day, you know, I can be around. I I can make those decisions. Well, currently right now, you know, I could I could I'm around. I'm able yeah. to be to make it to to certain events and stuff. You know, to for my family and just I'm not just a, a slave to the game to where you know I I, I can't be like I, I can't call out of work because I might get into the point and get fired or something like that. You know, you know, because there's some corporations out here that are treating humans like cattle stock, like and it's crazy and it's it's mind blowing. Like, but. That's crazy. But but on my free time, like I said, you know, I just like to spend time with the family. If not, you know, really just watching fights, studying. If not, um, doing some continuing professional education and cybersecurity, just getting my skill sets up to par, yep. just so I'm not getting stale, you know, just Thanks. increasing my value as a human being, you know, and myself, and how I value myself and mm -hmm. how I value myself is just spending that, being able to spend that time with family, being able to educate myself Facts. and get up to speed, you know, on certain things. You know, building yourself, you know? Yeah, exactly, yeah. If you're not learning something new, then what are you doing, brother? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's crazy, man. And did you do any sports besides, like, the wrestling? Yeah. When, let's see. When I grew up, 
horse football, the flagship football. Um, I did swimming for a little bit. I did that for a year. Got a varsity letter for that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but it's primarily just football and football and wrestling. But wrestling ended up taking over everything. I did football like one year in high school. After that, I was like, nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm I'm trying to body somebody in wrestling. <laughs> there was no better feeling than being able to suplex a kid on his head. Nah, for like, real. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Who who do you see yourself fighting in the next uh, couple years? Any like big names and all? Because I, I see you going there, bro. Like I, I yeah, because you're already big, brother. You already you got big people already watching you. So I see you fighting. I see you on TV. Like people talking about you. Like yo, like. Like they already am, but you you know what I'm saying? I like see, you know, I I see myself fighting fighting everybody, bro. Okay. I straight up like I'm not gonna sit here and name drop anybody specific, but yeah. anybody can get it. That's how I feel. You know, straight up. Like if you's not with the home team, then you you can get it. Like I will sign on the dotted line. Like there's no man everybody bleeds the same way, bro, on this earth, bro. There's nobody superhuman, bro, besides them dudes who be juicing. Yeah, who be on them cycles and whatnot. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. But uh, all yeah. natural over here. All natural. Yeah, shoot. That's crazy. People really be doing that, bro. Like, oh, bro, of course, man. Damn. You know, they feel like they their work, they they feel like they're incompetent, or they feel like it's gonna give them the better edge and whatnot. You know, some people be really be on it, and I, I be seeing it too. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. You can just see it. some people they be dropping out of like the testing pool and whatnot, just so they can go and. Yeah, right. And then all of a sudden they come back in the test and pull they clean, but they looking crazy. Looking crazy. Why couldn't you do that while you was in the testing pool? Facts. Like, Facts. That's insane. Yeah. And what's that? What is that testing pool? Uh, so sometimes like uh, there's uh, certain organizations um, that have testing pools set up, like for the UFC, for example. Okay. Um, they have a program with the USADA where... When you're uh, about to, you're gonna be fighting. You're declared. You're, you're trying to be in competition. That you could randomly, they can randomly show up. Like, oh like, damn, yo, pee in a cup for us right now, five in the morning, like type stuff. Like, damn, man, yeah. serious, man. Uh, you could hop off the training mat. Like, hey, uh, are are you Justin? Yeah, pee in a cup for me right now. Walk with they follow you right to the bathroom type stuff. Yeah, I've yeah. seen it happen with some teammates. It's crazy, but you know that's how it. That's how it is when you're in this game. But I appreciate that because then, you know, you got guys out here who'll be really on the juice and, you know, trying to get a better advantage. And sometimes these guys still be fucking getting their ass whooped. That's the, that's the, crazy that's the craziest part. part, right? So it's just, it's, yeah, it's just more about the looks than yeah. it is for the performance, right? It's like, yeah, it's like the looks and like uh, the gas tank it could give you, like certain drugs can give you a certain cardio gas tank that's like, oh shit, this guy's fucking like, he breathing like fucking heat. He, Oxygen is nitrogen for him. Yeah. <laughs> nitrous for him. Like, eh. Do you feel like genetics play like a big part? Oh, yeah, of course. Like, yeah, there are some people out there with some crazy cardio and it's just building their genetics, you know? Um, you know the, there's, you, you talk about tapping into your genetics too, because you got a lot of people with great genes, but they don't, they're not really putting in the effort to like really maximize the potential of those genes. But and you got some people who can just skate by, of course, but. How do you feel about like women and men fighting together? Is as a profession? Yeah, like, like or just you know in sports. Period. Like like they sanction a fight versus like let's say me versus a woman. Yeah. Fuck no! That hell no! Like no! This is no. <laughs> Why no. Why no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why and that's not being sexist. Nah, anything. for real. It's not being sexist or anything. But I just know that if I were to fight a, 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 a female of the same caliber of training, the same exact body mass, um, everything, everything same across the board, I have still got a little bit more testosterone naturally pumping in me than you. So the fight might just, it, 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 it could be bad. It, it could be bad, and I, I don't, I would never participate in anything like that, and I wouldn't want any man to fight a woman. It's just the visual, just it, seeing it, just like I, I can't, I can't watch, I can't watch a, 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 a real on fight with a man versus a woman. Like technical sparring, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, okay, of course, you know, technical yeah. sparring, but just like a, a real, real on fight, I. I I, I, that's not something I would pay to see. Yeah, because they're talking Straight about up. women and, and and men playing basketball together, like professionally. Ah, they see, yeah, see oh, that man. That's a thing, and, and, that, you know. And I know some women that are really smooth. Yeah, with, you know what I'm saying? Like that could play ball for real, but yeah, 
I mean, but is it fair though? It's it's also it's not even a, a factor. Is it, is it fair? Because there are some women out there who really can't they can hang or if not excel better than men in in certain sports. But I I, I don't feel society is ready for that image yet because I feel like just the image of if, the, if all that were to go through just the the, the different debates that would get sparked just That's off of controversy that could happen let's say some somebody gets hurt because of it like think of all the negative stuff that's going to come out out of that you know it's it's honestly it it's what it's whatever for for for, for as far as the basketball portion of it but yeah again everything is on a case-by-case basis now for the question about mma man versus woman no 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 just like there's guys like this there's Men who have changed their changed their gender that don't declare themselves as men. Respect to them, they yeah. change their gender. Do what you do. Um, yeah, not me but though. But then they go to compete as that same gender, knowing they're not naturally born that gender, and they're declaring themselves that gender, and that could that that that's a problem. Like I, I and you see there, there was like this uh, trans MMA fighter. Uh, this this man that went over and started fighting in women's leagues, and he was, she was really knocking these girls out, silly. Yeah, and uh, it was like, uh, well, if you looked at the fights, you can just tell there was just something a little bit extra that she had, like yeah. something was off. Something was off. Yeah, like, there was just too too much fast twitch aggression, just. It wasn't the same. The the type of power that was being generated from the hips, it wasn't. It was not the same. Something was off. Yeah. yeah. You know what's crazy? I used to work with a guy. I used to do like uh, fencing. Oh yeah, that's a good sport. My my coach David Lozen used to do fencing. He was well, just telling me about that, about disarming people and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, crazy. yeah. Well, well, not that type of fencing. Like literally, like. Oh. <laughs> 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 I just wait. Yeah. <laughs> nah, bro. Uh, yeah, it was construction, yeah. bro. And like, <laughs> yeah, that was funny yeah. as fuck. Nah, man. But yeah, bro. Like, I was working with this guy, man, for like a whole year, bro. And he's not even a guy. It was a woman. And I thought he was a guy the whole time. Like, oh. like it was insane. And when I found out, I was like, wow, this is insane, man. Like, my boy Bernard, shout out Bernard. And he's like, man, like, nah, you know, I went on his Instagram. He got the surgery. I was like, what? Oh. Well, I was just like, damn. And then like, like you definitely got, there's a lot of tough women out there. Yeah. I mean, tough he's not women. strong or anything, you know what I'm saying? But like, or she is, I don't, I don't even know what to call him, but yeah, I mean, he's a good person, good person, good person, good person. You know what I'm saying? But like, it's just, it blew my mind that I couldn't even tell. Like uh, maybe she just covered it, you know, with certain clothing and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's sometimes the, the, the intent, you know, yeah. they want to be perceived in a certain, certain light. So, you know, you got to respect that. That's, a, that's insane, man. Um, where do you see like the United States in the in the next couple of years? Do you feel like we're going going you know forward, or you feel like we're going backwards? I mean, in this generation, like what I've seen, what I've seen over the past years, and as a fan of technology, I've admired technology. Technology can be used for the good, if not the bad. Um, being in the cybersecurity field and seeing like the social warfare strategies that are being played by like China, like I'll give you an example. Yeah. Um, I feel like America's on the decline with our our youth because our youth, they're, they're, what's being idolized is like being the social media star, following these trends, being being that influencer. Yep. Like this day and age, TikTok that's the new hot thing. And I'll tell you this right now: if you got TikTok, guess what, bro? You you given. You get you sending all your data back to China. Every all your text messages, everything you've given access to everything. Well, I fucked up. Sent. I fucked up, guys, because yeah. I got TikTok for dope talk. So I mean, but God, now I, yeah. I listen to you know people but, like Gary V, like you know, yeah. You see it, what I'm saying? It, it's and it's different. But the TikTok though, it's different. Like, um, if you're not doing anything back and you don't mind sharing all your data with China and being a, a, a data point for them, then it's not a problem. But the thing, the difference is there's two different versions of TikTok. There's actually multiple different versions of TikTok. There's like an American version and like the version they give over in China. And like, guess what? Like the version here in America is, is focused on these silly videos, like to attention to keep people's attention span to not really 
develop them. The version in China is is idolizing like rocket science, like all these educational materials to to upbring their youth, to to educate them. And you can see where that goes. A decade from now, that continues to happen. That could be a problem. That's yeah. gonna just start idolizing and putting these other thoughts into the, the youth's mind to wanna be like this because that's what they seen growing up. That's what they saw was idolized versus, you know, over there, they're building the next generation type technology and Correct. stuff. Like, and you think about it, you, how do you attack the masses? Like you, you attack the youth and you can control the population. Yep. Um, and that's the strategy that that company has actually put out. So it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. And they're being called out for it. They're actually being sued for it too. So, you know. It's- That's insane. And you know what? Coming Like, I know a lot of people that haven't left the country, bro. You know what I'm saying? They haven't left the country whatsoever. And they don't know what it's like in, di- in different countries and, and, and different cultures, right? So my, my yeah. father's, uh, you know, he lives in Norway. I, I'm half Norwegian, you know? Okay. So growing up, you know, my dad worked on the Norwegian cruise line. He was an engineer. And we traveled the world, you know? But recently, my dad lived in, in Sanford for like 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he lived in the states for like 20 years, and he just know, recently moved back. A whole different, whole different ball game from Norway to come yeah. to Sanford Boat Key. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because like, because I, I mean, my parents split up and shit. So you know, we had a house here in DeBerry, but uh, we moved back to, uh, to Sanford and shit like that. And my dad, you know, got divorced with my mom, so you know, they split everything up. But going back to Norway, man, like I've been like seven times and like seeing the technology. And, and 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 it's it's really different. I feel like we're we're behind. My dad will always say that. He's like, I feel like America's like behind. Yeah, Norway got it popping for real. Yeah. That's and insane, for real, man. For real, especially I know some deaf and some Norwegian cybersecurity consult consulting companies out there that are doing great work. Some researchers are out doing great work. It's great. That's insane. Yeah. I don't I haven't really met a Norwegian down here so far, bro. Like, hey, I'm Norwegian. Like, I haven't, bro. That's crazy, man. But being Puerto Rican too, you know, half Puerto Rican, born in Puerto Rico, you know, yeah. I, I was raised on my Spanish side, obviously, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But um, you like rice, bro? You eat rice? Of course. Come man. on, you island boy, bro. We island boys, yeah. man. Yeah, I love rice. And that's the problem, you know, I'm cutting weight right now, so I can't, I got to stick away from the rice. That, that's that discipline, bro. Up. Yeah. That's discipline, yeah, especially man. Especially my mom making my favorite food and stuff. It's just like, God damn. <sighs> that, that's probably one of the hardest parts, right? Because you enjoy fighting. You enjoy, oh, I'm a fat you know. Boy. Bro, I'm a, bro, I'm a, I love food, bro. I love food. Me too. You ask me also why I like doing my free time. If if I can eat, well, I'm <laughs> eating everything. I'm eat, I mean every everything. I like to try new places. I like to, I like to go. I'm a foodie. I look at it, the Instagrams and whatnot. And oh, yeah. Like, you know, my wife and I we be looking at different places so we can go and eat. Is I like to enjoy the little finer things in life, man. While I'm here. That's crazy, man. Yo, man. Yo, I appreciate you coming out, bro. Um, man, what do you have to say, man? Any last words for Dope Talk TV, man? The Dope Talk family, Daltona, Florida, 386. Hey, man. I just want to give a shout out to yeah, all like my two people. Uh, your shout out to all my people, you know, at Dark Wolf MMA. You know, we are here getting it every day. Also, the Toe Fitness, Strength and Conditioning, and then Fusion XL Performance out there with Julian Williams. Uh, we are here chasing the dream, man. Just my people also, you know, my fam. Shout out to my wife. You know, that's my rock. Holding yeah. everything down. Right. So it wouldn't be possible right. without her. You know, shout out to my son, too. Give me that in, that motivation, man, to, to work hard, to show him that he can get it out of here, too. You know? Yep. Pretty much everybody, you know, all my teammates, everybody on my camp, you know, for real. You know, everybody know the parts that they play. I appreciate everybody. I always show my love. I appreciate you too for having me out here. Yeah, bro. bro. What you mean, bro? I respect it, man. You showing up, bro. You showed up. Fucking showed love, bro. You know, showed up on time. You know what I mean? Like, we chilling. You feel me, man? And be back. Yo, bro. Definitely going to be back, bro. Next time I see you, bro, you're going to be the top. Number one, I'm I'm supporting man because you know you're from my city, bro. You're from our city. This is this is us. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Me. Like we, this is what we do, man. You probably don't see us anymore. Clipped out, but hey, man, love you guys. See you till next time. Ciao.